this note. When I started turning, people weren't allowed to paint on their pieces. You weren't allowed to texture them. That was that was the bogey. Okay, it had to be the pure natural wood. In the last 10 to 15 years, all of a sudden, people have come to the forefront with painting on pieces and texturing and stuff. And I hate to say it, but some of this was stuff I did 35 years ago. And it wasn't acceptable then. Today it's the rage. If you talk to anyone who's taken a decorative art classes, a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you isn't really new. It's just old stuff that's become new again. Okay? I mean, she has an excuse because she was part of that generation. All right. So, the main one that everybody seems to want to know how I did are to do the water drops on a piece. Okay? And quite literally, all you do is you paint the water drops. Easy said for you than me. Um, <laughs> And I'm also going to show you how you can do an individual one because if you had something like a, a little apple or something, to put water drops all over it would be ridiculous. Like if you had a form in this shape, can anybody think of why you wouldn't put water drops here? Because they're going to run around the other side. Because when you stand it up, what would the water drops be doing? be running. So if they're still there, they're not going to look natural. The only place you would apply them would be here on top. So you have to kind of look at your piece and use a little bit of common sense as to where you're going to put them. Similarly, there's no way you're going to put them on the bottom of the piece. Not many people look at the bottom. Okay. So this is a technique that's best used um, on a rim sort of like this. Now, if you, uh, Paul, it's been told. One of the things you have to realize is that water drops do not have square corners. They're going to be round, and you're going to have surface tension where they touch the surface. And that's what constructs them. Now, if you add a light source on here, the light will penetrate. I'll move back so the people on the sides can see a little better. The light is going to penetrate down here and reflect off this bottom area. So in an area, Basically, about like this, you're going to have a light colored area. Conversely, because the light's penetrated straight down here, this area up here is going to be a shadowed area. Okay, and much darker. The part in the middle, that has to be the base color of whatever your piece was. So when I decided to paint the blue water drops here, the first thing I did was I took a medium blue color, the royal blue, and I covered the whole piece with the medium color. Then when I paint the water drops, I'm going to use a navy, paint one side of the water drops, and I'm going to use a, a white on the other side. Okay. When I did the green one, I used a medium green as my base color. And I used a darker green for the shadow color. And I used the white for the highlight. Can I pass this around? No. Oh. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just open your mouth to change feet. Eh? <laughs> first he talks through the first part and doesn't listen. All right. Now, when I got this finished, 
I didn't really like the contrast between the wood and this. So while it was still mounted on the lathe, and with the lathe turned off, I took a, a thin Sharpie Magic Marker in black, and I just put a black edge right along here. And that just sort of finished the transition from here to the back. Similarly, I did the same thing on this side. And you're far better off with the machine off. Okay? Somehow you'll find your hands aren't as steady when you're doing it uh, at high speed. Now, when I did this one, <coughs> uh, I actually did this as part of a demo at the Hamilton Wood Show. And this was a really important piece in that demo because I totally screwed the demo up. And Paul was there, he can verify it. She screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was, after I had painted the entire top piece, I remounted it on the uh, lathe with the intention of putting an outside ring like this on it. All right? And I made my cut, and I stopped the lathe, and my cut only went part way around. It only went part way around. What had happened was some dust or something had gotten in. This was not square in the chuck, so it was off center, and it only cut part way. But that was a really important lesson for everybody there. I could have thrown a temper tantrum said some naughty words, and I didn't say one, and uh, or I could have just turned this all off, sanded it down, and started over again. I mean, I had all those options. Instead, I took a look at it, and I said, you know, I really like this. What the heck? I went ahead and I made two more cuts, and as a result, I think it ended up a much prettier piece than it would have been with my original design. More artistic. So like Bob Ross used to say, there are no mistakes, there are only happy accidents. All right, and I knew Bob quite well. And uh, that was that's an example right there. But it's an important lesson to not take a mistake you've made and think it's the end of the world and you have to start all over it again. Take a look at it and say, okay, how can I use this to my advantage? How can I, I, I make it work better? I would just about guarantee that over 75% of the artistic pieces that you're seeing today coming up on the internet that people are coming out with and doing came from mistakes that they made and ways they covered it up. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's where the artistic element comes in. It's being able to see, okay, how can I take this mistake and turn it into something positive? Okay, now the variety of things that I'm going to show, I'm not just going to do this. Uh, we'll also give people ideas. You don't have to be a phenomenal artist to do any of this, this stuff, okay? But what's important is when you decide to do the water drops, you have to have two tones of the color that's going, your base color and then a darker shade of it and then a lighter color. I mean I could have used an off-white you know to go with this as well. All right okay now in case you've done a really nice piece and you don't want to have to put it back on the lathe and redo it just get some plywood, cut some discs out of it, sand it, put a base coat of the color you want. And by the way, I just bought that at uh, Home Depot, so it's not like I went out and bought expensive paint, paint at Michael's. But you do have to be 18, so that when you get caught doing the underpasses, then... <laughs> <laughs> um, trick is you don't get caught. That's mm -hmm. Okay, so after I put the color on, what I did was I went back over it with some uh, just plain clear. Okay, and I tend to use the gloss because I find it works better with this technique. Okay, I guess we're doing blue. So. <coughs> 
I know. I'm not saying that. You need something to do. Shake it. <laughs> While we're shaking, uh, for those that are interested, that metal rack right there have all those pieces. That's uh, from um, A Less Shoes. They're selling all their things. I picked up that rack for a hundred bucks. You can put a shitload of uh, wood blanks or in if you're looking for something you don't have a lot of room. It's on wheels. Good deal. You should have said crap load. <laughs> we have a minor here. Yeah. Is that your daughter? Where's the second one? See, you know what school is made into. Ah, you're supposed to bring two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're forgiven. Is that lacking? Yeah. Is that a lacking? I got that All right. You, have you done your part? What's that, Parker? I All right. What direction do you want me to spray? You want to spray over here? I do it on the gun cable, or you're doing... If I go that way, is that okay? Yeah. Right there. I feel that one. You want to do it from here that way? Because you're going to be getting a people. No, I had certain ones targeted. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. them. As long as you're not targeting me again. Well, that's, that's because when Paul did his, and I was spraying, he chose to put his nose right there. It's kind of hard to miss. <coughs> All right. Now, this is, this is the magic. You've got to use a special tool to put the water on. Uh, one day, I didn't have to. I just left it outside. Nothing. All right. Now, first thing that happened was I've got a great big puddle up here. You don't want very big puddles. Okay? No, you just want drops. So that's why you keep a paper towel handy. And you kind of look at it and say, okay, that's how much I want. <laughs> Bless you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> you probably need it. <laughs> that was for not bringing my boyfriend to Yeah. Me. I'm going to use his paws to make those droplets. So you're going to leave those big drops there? Yep. Okay. Well, if they're bothering you. No, no, I'm just curious because it's going to take longer to dry. It'll take a different effect. Well, this won't dry. For a while, it's got to evaporate. So, right. yeah, they're all right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Do we have a look at that in the movie. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Water sitting down, 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 down up there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. It's just <coughs> literally water on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And whatever pattern you get is what you get. And if you don't like it, well, it's too bad. It off wipe it off and do it over, over again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, make sure you read the can before you spray. All right. So I hold it at about eye level. So it just coated a bit. It's a little heavy. But you can see it only only did one side of the water drops. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So then turn it 180 degrees. That's a half a turn. <laughs> For those who forgot their math. Okay. And you do the other side of the water drops. Okay. And then literally the hard part comes, you have to just let it sit and let it dry. And that's it. That's and it. that's that's all You can it. see it. <coughs> You've still got water. Yeah. Take a look. Wow. Oh, yeah, that was great. Wow. Yeah, I can see it, too. Oh, wow. Is there a kind of thing that it doesn't work every this way? Yeah, water, water paint. Water paint. Oh, yeah. Water filler. <laughs> so you put the paint on the water filler. After it dries. Oh, after it dries. Okay. After All right. Dry. I bet you're not sure. I find it's 
So it's it's no big talent, uh, and if you don't like it while it's still wet, just wipe it off. Give it another coat of the medium blue. When that dries, do it again. All right. All right. Now I'm going to do this one a little bit bigger than I would normally think. So if I had a piece and I only wanted to do a single water drop, okay, say it was on <coughs> a smaller piece and all you want is one water drop, maybe two. So I just lay out in pencil basically where, where I want it. If you can't draw an oval, they make beautiful sheets like this at the art store. That'll help you out. You can pick what size water drop you want and trace it on. You could also use these if you want to airbrush this. Airbrushing this would take you minutes. Okay, but if you want to, you can do it with a plain old, um, a plain old brush. And a lot of times for mixing paint, I keep these magazines that come in the mail instead of throwing them in the recycle bin. Uh, the ones with the shiny paper, because they're really nice to put glue, mix glue on or to mix paints on. So if I'm going to do this water drop, what's the first thing I need to color on? Go back to the anatomy of a water drop. I've got a light source coming in. What's the light going to do? It's going to lighten this lower area. Okay. So if I've done it in a medium blue, this lighter blue should work out pretty good with it. And I put a, if I get it open, I put just a little bit out. And I mean a little bit because you don't need a whole lot. Wet my brush first. Touch it to some paper towels. And then I only take one corner of the brush and I touch the paint. And I go into the paint and come out from the paint. And can you see how I've already got going from dark <coughs> to light created? And if you see the brush, it's not painted all the way across. So now when I come back, I can paint this lower edge. If you guys can't see, some of you guys can come around back. And this paper is really, really, uh, really dry. So it's going to take a little more than I wanted. And the whole secret is in loading your brush properly. up as you come through the end of the, the, the drop. So what's happened now is I've got the light has come through the top of the, the water drop and it's highlighted the bottom edge of it. Okay? So what do I have to do next? Shadow part on it. Put the shadow on the opposite side. Navy blue should be a little darker color than this. Can any of you figure out yet why I don't do water drops on uh, black? There's no darker. There's no darker it's color of black. Right. So if you really wanted it on a dark surface like that, what I would tend to do is go <coughs> with a dark, dark gray that has maybe a hint of blue in it, and you could use the black as your shadow, and then use a lighter gray to form the light part. That didn't go thick enough. No. It's the paint. Some of this paint is older than some of you. 
Not <laughs> not tail. <laughs> That's right. You don't lick your brushes clean. <laughs> Whitewash then, wasn't it? So it's okay. So now I come through on the other side. I used to paint in that home where I've got uh, a little more light than I have here. Yeah, bring the home on. Bring yeah. the light source. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. The good light is over there, spray. Now, if, if that wasn't quite dark enough, and uh, you have a, a little bit of an eye for color, even if you can't get paint to come out of your tube, When I go to the coffee shop, I always collect these uh, sticks. <laughs> <coughs> I don't, don't need much. You can mix your darker color. You just wouldn't want to use a straight black. See how it's still in the same tonal range, but it's it's a little darker. And a lot of times, this is a better way when you don't have a, a color that just matches really well. Yeah, if you're colorblind, you're messed up. Yeah, can't do it. You're in trouble. I just call you to come over. That's what I was afraid you'd say. Maybe <laughs> another collaboration? Yeah. All right, so that's got it part way. Now, there's another element of um, water drops that make them kind of stand out. And that's a warm white. Titanium is, is more of a cold white, a pure white. My look, this won't come out. And you can pick up your paint at the dollar store. You don't have to go buy expensive paints. The acrylics that they sell there, the Arlene's and that, it's just as good. All right, now. Did you want to hold that one up so they can see where you're at at this point? Yep, but I'm going to hold it up from, you hold it up from way over there. You can see the start of it. <coughs> now there's another aspect. When you do this really small, it, it stands up even nicer. <coughs> is that you always have a light that hits the surface and doesn't penetrate, but it's reflected back. And you have to kind of think about, okay, what's the source for that light? Are, is it long tubes like this? Is it a square from a window coming through? Is it kind of a spotlight? That's a spotlight. You want to paint a round reflection on it. Long tubes, you want basically a long line. From a window, you want something that's more like a, a rectangle. So, and the shape does not have to be perfect. That's the nice thing about this. And 
and you do not have to be a highly skilled artist. You just have to be able to see colors. Now you're doing it on the, the dark I'm doing color. it on the shadowed area because okay. this is where it's reflected at the top. And if I wanted to get a really nice little round, round one, you dip your brush, get a little bit of water on the paint so it's actually wet. Were you doing toll painting before this? <coughs> <laughs> My wife does all this toll painting. <laughs> then you have a perfect source for learning or to do it for you. Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly <laughs> that? what this is. It's toll painting. It's yeah. an old style now. Hold it way over there. Oh, yeah. yeah, cool. So when you do that really tiny, it, it, it shows up quite well. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you... Um, if you had a shape like this, you're not going to put your water drops here. So you have to kind of think about, if I put them here, when the piece is like this, they should all be running off. Okay, they're only going to sit on top edges. Now if you put one on a curve like that, and by the way guys, do one and two, do not leave your brushes sitting in water because you get the water up here into the metal ferrule and then the glue starts to come undone and then the uh, hairs start to come out. And don't leave your brush sitting without uh, cleaning it otherwise the hairs get stuck together and then it doesn't work very well. If you have to clean a brush and you've messed it up and left it, take a cup Fill it about this far with Murphy's oil soap. <coughs> Suspend the brush so that just the, the hairs are into the soap. And put a clothesline peg across here to hold it on the top of the cup. Leave it for a few hours then take it out and wash it in your hand. And you'll be surprised most of that will all come out of it. Okay, and that works even for oil paints. If you did this one with oil paints, you could blend that so easily. Um, I mean, that's that's like working with Cadillacs instead of uh, <laughs> Jeeps. Okay, um, if you do put your your water drop on the side of a piece that comes like this, okay, I can't put it here. Okay, I can't put it over, over here because the water drop will come off. But if you take a look <coughs> at a water drop, you can put a water drop and I'll have a bigger bulbous end here just before it's ready to run off. So what do you think I have to do down here? Sand? No. Could be. That will be your wider area. Right, that's yeah. going to be your light because your light source will come down. So this will be your light area in here. And the opposite side of the water drop right in here is where you would have to put your dark. And let it taper out. <coughs> okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So your white is at the bottom. So you would spray white first and then the dark goes over top up here, and it would also cover part of the white, and that gives you the two tones, right? No, you, you, if you divide this into thirds, one-third's dark, <coughs> one-third's medium, and one-third's light. So how are you spraying that bottom part to make it lighter? Because if I'm going with the spray can on, am I not getting it all white? No, this is hand painting. This is no, hand this painting. Is oh, hand painting. Or, oh, air, okay. or, or, or airbrushing. Okay. Yeah, doing it that tiny. There's no way in heck I would use this spray can. Of stuff there. <coughs> okay, so does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, now for an easier, easier project. You want to pass that in? Okay. This one requires zero talent. <laughs> yeah, even Paul, even Paul can do this one and not this one. And he's colorblind. And, and he's colorblind, too. <laughs>
Alright, and if you're not sure about what you're going to do, like I said, make up some just cardboard discs like this and try it out on there and experiment with it, okay? Now, I'll just put this to the side. To do that, um, what I recommend you use, this is when you want a black background. You want to use either the jars like this, and these are the Josonia iridescent paints. Buy them on uh, Amazon or from the Artist Club. If you can, buy them in the uh, cans like this. They also come in tubes. Okay. The advantage of the cans is that if you have some left over, it's a whole lot easier to get the paint back in than it is in the tubes. And my mother is Scottish, so I don't waste paint. You can pass those around. Okay. Now, what's... Take one or two. <laughs> I know exactly how many are in there. She is Scottish. All right. Thanks, Paul. Get these out of the way so you can see a little better. And if you want to use regular acrylic paint and do this, you get the same effect. The only thing with the iridescent is it kind of has that sparkly look to it. Uh, don't pick a whole lot of colors, like for example a blue, a violet, and maybe a green is enough. Three colors are generally the rule for artists. When you put these out, okay, this is a violet. I think you're starting to see what the problem is. <laughs> this would be really bad for Paul. Colors are mixed. That's what the color is. They're all opaque. See? They're all slightly different shades of white. Right. So I'll hold it up so you can you can see for yourself. Yeah, which is which is they're all white to me. Yeah. All right. That's why when you lay them out, the smart thing to do is you literally put the color opposite where you put it down. So you can see what you what you put down. Okay. Now the other thing you need besides the iridescent paint is you need what's called a flow medium. When they make paint, paint is no more than a dry pigment that's mixed with a binder to carry the pigment. And the flow medium is the medium that's used to carry the pigment. By adding some of this to each piece, what you do is um, you just make it a little more liquidy. Okay. All right, who's the oldest person in here? She puts her hand up. <laughs> <laughs> no, for once I'll, I'll refrain from doing that. Ted, how old are you? 91. And a half. And a half. <laughs> oh, he was trying to cheat on us, not let us know about the half part. He just Anybody had his half. He just had his half birthday. Ah. Actually, it's ninety point five, ninety okay. decimal five. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I get a birthday cake, a half a birthday cake when it's ninety decimal five. Just a half. Boy, yeah, that's a reason for off. another party. Yeah. <laughs> no boy, Ted. Go for go for it. You get the so other half. What about, six what about, what be what stale, about decimal but you get the other half. <laughs> yeah. Quarter mark. Now I'm going to pull your chair up closer to the uh, table. Okay. 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 
Okay. Now, if I had a piece of saran wrap, that would probably work better than paper towel. Saran wrap? Yeah. How about the uh, stretch wrap? Stretch wrap, yeah. Huh? You have okay. some? I have some. Stretch, wraps, wrap too, stretch wrap works better or saran wrap because um, it doesn't absorb, but in, in a pinch you could use a piece of uh, yeah. Oh, doggy bag. Sandwich bag. <laughs> doggy, doggy bags work too. That's okay. Paul's got some behind you. Save, save the doggy yeah. bag. Yeah. Save the doggy bag. No. He's just sending it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. 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 Corey, you can see Paul. This is a tough crowd. Or you can see Ed smell. Now, the best part is you don't have to be able to fold it perfectly. You just scrunch it up. Right? However you want it, okay? So, take some of that, dip it in one of those. One cup. <laughs> okay, now just splotch it all over the place. Splotch down harder. Work. Use muscle. Okay? Yes. Go all over. <laughs> Keep going. All over. Cover the whole circle. <laughs> doesn't have to uh, do another color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say how much to put on. Well, this is up to the individual. Well, I am. Now, the artist, Dad. Depending on how he put it, he's got two effects going already. Already. Yeah. yeah. All right. And I guarantee if I gave every one of you one of these, your effects would come out different. Okay. So what he can do then if you wanted to. He could take his, his piece of uh, saran wrap and go into one of the other colors and just here and there, since he already got a little purple into it, add okay and I'm just trying to hit spots that he kind of didn't hit with that color Ruby, there's one place there where it's quite heavy. Can you level, level that off? No. Nope. Right by your uh, right hand. Right there? Oh. There? Right there? Yeah. Well, I'd leave it. Let it leave dry. it, would you? Yep. It'll dry. If, if it bothered you, yeah, you could take yeah. some of it off. Okay, I'll go to another piece of saran wrap so you get to see the blues. So you're seeing wow. how the cool. different colors come up with an effect. Yeah. Okay, and you're seeing where this is not something that you have to be highly skilled at. Well, I thought he was. <laughs> no, you did a very good job. Because it's really the wrong doing it wrong. Exactly. I can probably have it too. Um, Okay, it's I'm going to try that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it is really good. Right, and that's why I said all these, when you put them down, looks white. But that's why I put the color right beside each puddle so that I knew which color it was going to turn to as it starts to dry. Okay? Okay. Now, that's because it's iridescent? Yep. Yeah. Now, there's nothing that says you can't take a brush and come by and start to create an effect something like this or if you wanted to shimmer it so you've got almost uh, an effect like uh, Um, like the Northern Lights, you can create that whole effect. And if you don't like that, take a sponge and a wet cloth and wipe it all off. And do it over again. All right. So that gives you. I mean, there's no right or wrong. So you've experimented. Like Ted did initially. You don't like what I just did. 
So you wipe it all off. I might have to get some paper towels for you. I'll add it to your bill. Okay. <laughs> Take it out of my paycheck. <laughs> yeah, okay, there's another effect where you've got clouds going all the way around. Kind of a mix of color. Let it dry. Okay. If you got the paint really wet, what these gentlemen were just talking about, and the paint's really wet and you have this mounted on the lathe, as it's turning you can drop some on and centrifugal force will throw it out and create some really beautiful patterns as well. The one thing you do want to do, take paper or plastic and cover your entire lathe. <laughs> and those who have been to my place know that I have a shower curtain around my, my uh, lathe area so that it doesn't go all over everything, okay? But you get the idea of what you can do. Okay, now another way you can have fun with this stuff. <laughs> Some of this was stuff I used to teach to the kids Just do it phonetically. Um, doing something like this. Uh, basically, I use string and a paintbrush. To get the three dots in a row, I took the end of a, of a brush, I got it well loaded in paint. I don't think I have enough out right there. <coughs> I'll put some wonder. I'll just dab in here. Okay, you get some on the end of your brush. Dab it a couple times there, and just hit it, turn it, <coughs> and they just get progressively smaller, naturally, okay? So that's another way you can create that effect, okay? So again, this was not highly skilled. Now, doing the string art, I found, for string, I found plain old wool works about the best. And there are several ways of doing this. By the way, that was a donation for this demonstration from Michael's. up at Hobby Lobby. I was just looking at it's an acrylic, that's all. Yeah, it's just a plain acrylic. It's so, so flow troll or any of that stuff will work too. Yeah. If, but if you're going to use a medium, make sure you get the medium from the same brand of paint. Okay. And it should be called the medium. And all this paint you got at Michael's? No, the Joe Sonia point paint uh, get it from uh, Amazon or the Artist Club. And 
they'll ship it to you. You can get the sets of six colors. <laughs> now, I found if I dunk this in the water and get it already saturated before I start, I have a, a little better chance of getting it to work. And this is where you get to have fun. You get your fingers all covered. So, you can blame it on me. You can say it was my fault that you got all covered. Your hands are dry. I think you should take that and put it on top of it. Well, okay, Paul's on top of there. You can reach it there from there. There you go. All right. So let's say I, uh, let's say I go something like Try and get kind of an S sort of a curve going. And then when you pull, it may not be wet enough to get the full effect. You've got to get these really soaking wet, okay? You get that kind of a flower effect. I might even add just a little bit of water. You've got to get, the string has got to be really, really wet for it to uh, flow well. Same way. Yeah. And another thing you can do is you could lay a piece across here like this. Lay another one. Let's see if it'll work. If it doesn't work, what do I do? Wipe it off. Wipe it off. That's right. <laughs> Who's going to know if it doesn't work? That's absolutely right. <laughs> All of you. I stole this off, off your waist wife's desk. So if that's good and wet, and you go like this, and start, just get a hook on her, and start pulling it around. Just come over here and grab another part, and start pulling it around. You can start getting all these weird shapes starting to come out. Okay? And it doesn't have to look like a flower. Okay? If you want, it can be whatever you want it to be. Okay? If you want to go really, really wild. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll try one other one. Got one piece of string left. I use the weight this time. I saw one technique that they did similar, but they had something. Something like holding it down and as you pull it, kind of press the yeah. string yeah. against the surface. That's all done with back on the way. It's yeah. better if you can yeah. get it Just really, really wet. Yeah. Just sort of dig it in. Yes. Yeah. The wetter, more liquid, the uh, some inks would work really well for this as well. And like Cheryl said, if you can keep one part down and get it to run through, and then pull, pull, pull down, you can get nice. 
And sometimes you can even get more than one to come out of it. Like yeah, it looks like a flower, that one. Okay. So you can see where the wetter the paint is, the easier it'll flow and follow this. So you have a little bit of control. <coughs> Not a whole lot. Okay. Now, the other big thing happening today is doing texturing. Paul, could you turn, turn me on? Turn around, Paul. Turn around. How fast? <laughs> That's fast. Just half fast. <laughs> oh, boy. <coughs> okay, turn me off. Didn't know you could turn a woman on and off that fast. Did you? <laughs> Never been so lucky. <laughs> So you get a different shape with this one. Okay. Not a very good piece. No. <laughs> <laughs> By putting bigger pressure on, I can make larger ones. Less pressure, I can get smaller dots. <coughs> so you can see we're I'm getting kind of a floral pattern. The only problem I see is that. If you make, if you don't like it, you can't wipe it off. No. That's <laughs> true, but on the other hand, sand it off. Sand you have a laser, right? <laughs> on the other hand, that's why I'm doing it on here to see if I like it instead of on one of them. If I don't like it, so I've lost a piece of wood. I still have over here. I can do texture as well. And you can turn it over and use the other side. like a ripening banana. <laughs> so there's a totally oh, wow. different effect. That's pretty good. And figure taking out the center and you can have this texturing go right down into the center of the bowl that you've taken out. How do you finish that off? Do you texture it? What do you put on top? Lacquer. I just put a spray lacquer on. Or a wipe on. Although I find spray works better with the things that are textured. You could fill those with paint too. You could fill all of these with paint. Talk to Rob. And get some uh, colors in that and fill them all in. Do them, uh, say, with the iridescent paint so that it's, uh, it kind of flows from a blue into a, a purple to a red or something. Mm. The limits of what you can do 
are only limited by the six inches between your ears. And every time you look around at different things, you know, you can start to say, uh, hmm, there's a nice moth. I, could, I can draw a moth on there. I could paint a moth. You can get stencils of a moth or a butterfly, put them on and airbrush or hand paint them very easily. Okay, there. You can even get paint by numbers and put them on. Alright, so it's, you know, like, this is not something, uh, I mean, yeah, okay, I have a lot of art skill. All the paintings in my house I've painted, and I tend to paint high realism. None of this is high realism, not even close. This is something anybody can do, because whoever does it, and whatever it looks like, nobody else can tell you it's wrong. If you like it, that's the only criteria that matters. And don't, don't let, you know, like uh, Frank Sudol, who was a, oh, a turner from 30 years ago from uh, Saskatchewan. I, I listened to him once and uh, we had a long conversation and he said, if you put a piece into a jury <laughs> to get jury, and the three judges don't like it. He said, don't get upset. All it means is that they like blue shoes and you like white shoes. They like a blue shirt and you wanted a white shirt. It's personal opinion at that point. The person that's most important in all of what you do is you. Do you like it? And the only area where people get really, uh, they do make mistakes is in their shape and their form. Okay? Um, if it's supposed to be a curve, there are no flats on a curve. Except they're so tiny you can't see them. Okay? But, um, you know, and the forms and shapes, they've been around since for 2,000 years. There isn't one that any person here is going to come up with that hasn't been already yeah. made. Okay, so what I'm trying to encourage you to do is to step out of your box and experiment with something totally different. Like, for example, I could take Rob's black candlestick there, and I could take this and put a spiral of that going all the way up with one twist. Do that it. Would, that would change the whole dimension of that piece that he's made totally from what he had to sure, start with. <laughs> <laughs> I do that to my own. I wouldn't do it to somebody else's. The only time I've done it to somebody else's is when I've worked in a collaboration setting where literally you make something, you hand it to the next person, and then they add their touch to it. Or you get a piece they've made and you add your touch to it. Okay? But you can see from my box, I've got all different sizes and shapes of, uh, you know, round ones that are thin. I've got long ones that are pretty coarse. Every one of them gives a different texture going across. And just take a scrap, paint it, and see what texture you're getting from it. And if I wanted to really highly define this, I could take a wood burner and burn a nice clean line along there and stay within those lines, if you have to stay within the lines. Okay. Does that help anybody out? Give them some ideas? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. A lot easier than I ever thought. <laughs>